friend, Dr. Alveda. Yeah. Good morning, good evening, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a PASA for Philippine Innovation Fireside Chat uh, series. I'm Gisela Concepcion. Uh, I'm a member of the executive uh, of the National Innovation Council as an executive member representing the scientific community and uh, nominated by the PASA. So I'm hosting this. I'm also a PASA president. And for those who are joining for the first time, uh, welcome. And it's my way of um, trying to draw out our uh, uh, innovators um, uh, at present uh, for the purpose of perhaps um, uh, eventually inviting them or soliciting proposals for them uh, for the innovation grants, which will probably be announced um, first quarter of next year or later second quarter. We're working very hard on the guidelines of this. So, um, well, um, thank you for joining us. And I already uh, acknowledged um, some of our guests earlier before we uh, recorded this event. So I'd like to, um, well, um, express my excitement and my enthusiasm for, for this series, Fireside Chat series. And uh, especially today, uh, we are featuring uh, 
one of the uh, earliest innovators that uh, I have known, you know, who um, just went into the business of uh, scientific entrepreneurship and, um, well, never stopped uh, trying different things with um, uh, different uh, kinds of collaborators or different um, agencies as well, um, mostly in the biomedical field. And now very, very um, uh, pleasantly surprised to see that uh, he is into um, indigenous uh, feedstock sources for renewable natural gas. So our guest today, uh, Danilo Dani Maneyaga, is a chemical engineer. And uh, we've known him uh, for a long time as a major guy in Secura that supported many of our projects through uh, uh, equipment and facilities. So um, at this point, I'd like to introduce my co-host, uh, Dr. Alvin Colaba, a mechanical engineer, distinguished professor of, U of De La Salle University. Congratulations to the Green Archers uh, for your victory, uh, Alvin. Anyways, <laughs> I think uh, it's always welcome to have uh, uh, UP and La Salle uh, uh, compete uh, in a friendly manner. But we also know that uh, looks like um, the other school flashed green lights. Am I right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the other night or two nights in a row, just like uh, De La Salle flashed blue lights uh, when the Ateneo won uh, several years ago. Anyway, nobody uh, fl uh, flashes uh, the maroon lights. So I don't know when we, when we won uh, some time back. Anyways, I think that at this point, uh, we can hear from uh, Dr. Alvin Colaba, also a past PASA president and current vice president of the NAST uh, to introduce our distinguished guest, Thank Alvin. You. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Emeritus and Academician uh, Gisela Concepcion. This is now, Giselle, our 14th uh, edition of our Fireside uh, chat series on Philippine innovation. Yes, of course, congratulations to University of the Philippines. Uh, what a great fight, you know. I was also rooting for UP, of course. <laughs> so anyway, you could have uh, UP should have won it. But anyway, let's uh, get back to to our Friday uh, series again. Good evening to those uh, people in parts of the, uh, other parts of the world, like Doc Greenley over there in in the US. Our uh, you know uh, distinguished speaker for this morning is a chemical engineer and an entrepreneur. This is something uh, I'm missing. You know. I should be trained to be an entrepreneur, Danny. So you have to help me how, how to be an entrepreneur, you know. He is the president and CEO of several, uh, you know, companies, the Pacific Secura, International Consolidated Holdings Corporation, the Royal Pacific Waste Management and Power Generation Incorporated, and the founder of the Secura International Corporation, uh, which is a company, a developer of natural ingredients such as bromelain enzyme, papain, moringa oil, jasmine oil, you know. However, uh, I think our topic and interest for this morning is about, uh, you know, indigenous uh, material for our, uh, you know, renewable energy uh, uh, energy uh, sources. So he cultivated local hybrid napier grass about 650 hectares in Maguindanao with modern farm equipment for mechanized operations, supplying biomass fuel to a 25 megawatt biomass power plant. Um, Danny, this is close to me you know, because I've worked uh, in the renewable energy, even in, in biomass uh, energy. And I'm interested in biomass torrefaction. That's our next uh, you know, work that we want to do. So our speaker, again, established pilot plants for torrefaction and algae biomass production for feedstocks of biogas uh, production now on the expansion phase in Luzon for a large scale production for biomethane uh, production. Let us hear, you know, from no other than engineer Danilo Manayaga. Uh, Danny, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, well, um, I will be introducing this new concept uh, in, in, for large scale production in the Philippines. Oops, what's okay? As you know, the the only commercial source of natural gas is the Malampaya gas field. According to Fitz, uh, 
the depletion is expected to start by 2024. And uh, while the, the government is also planning to expand more uh, power plants replacing um, the coal uh, production uh, using coal and uh, and their their uh, vision is to move towards renewable energy by replacing uh, most of the coal and oil uh, sources of power um, but you know, by 2040, they, they can they can only re, uh, reduce the use of coal from 45% share to 24% share. It cannot really, um, by just uh, 10 years, uh, some of the existing coal power plants will still be operational. And they're moving from one source of imported fuel to another imported fuel called uh, LNG to, to uh, maximize the natural gas usage. Uh, that is a solution which is also uh, increasing the cost of power, the, the user. While the energy, uh, International Energy Agency have already pointed out that there is a global biogas uh, uh, demand that by 2050 it will be reach, uh, it, it will reach around 350 billion cubic meters equivalent uh, uh, as of 2023 europe uh, has produced about 21 billion cubic uh, meters of gas replacing the 150 billion cubic meters they are importing from russia and their ambition by 20 30 is about 35 uh, billion cubic uh, meters. And the other areas of the world, including uh, India and uh, the US, is moving towards above a total of about 120 billion cubic, uh, uh, cubic meters of natural uh, uh, biomethane. But as, you, as they have pointed, pointed out, there is this. Uh, sustainable biomethane potential from agricultural uh, sources, including the Philippines. Um, so we can really uh, replace fossil fuel if this will all be activated. Now, our approach is uh, to produce biogas, you know. Uh, it's like the, the technology is using natural bac uh, bacteria present in the stomach of the cow and uh, supplying all the feedstock uh, feeds uh, locally um, and, and uh, as well as uh, planting more on the energy grass, uh, napier grass to, to feed, uh, to be used as uh, the feedstock for biogas. And uh, biogas is a mixture of uh, methane and carbon dioxide and some other contaminants, which you can, uh, Purify by using uh, the novel filtration system, which you can uh, in, uh, increase the purity of methane, as well as recombine uh, the carbon dioxide that you uh, separated from the biogas feed uh, feed uh, the source by using uh, solid oxide electro uh, cells electro electrolysis of water. By using met the methanation process, you will produce more uh, methane to produce power. The reason why I choose to use power uh, on the first phase is to bring down the cost of uh, electricity generation in this country and make it more uh, sustainable in the years to come without, uh, uh, not affected by the uh, foreign exchange rate. So um, I um, we will be using this uh, the GE uh, aero derivatives uh, 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 what do you call this their system, which uh, one unit will produce about fifty three megawatts and it can be hundred percent 
uh, change to hydrogen if it is available, and then they can move back to natural gas. Or if there is no natural gas, you can use uh, uh, distillate and then uh, gasify it to, to be used in this uh, power plant. It can change, uh, you, it, you can start five minutes after you heat it up. So it becomes a, a very useful uh, alternative for the grid right now, which is experiencing experiencing several outages uh, as well as well as this intermittent supply from renewable energy source like solar and wind. So this facility can be used as peaking plant in the grid where there is a need for that, and it can also be used as a mid merit uh, quick dispatch uh, power plant and it can be used as continuous base load, especially in the national grid where there are areas, especially on the extreme side of Luzon, the northern side is uh, do not have enough supply of good uh, continuous power. Now, this is the, the recently concluded DOE investment uh, meeting that, uh, the renewable energy development is more on solar and wind. And uh, about 51 gigawatts in offshore wind. Uh, as you know, this is very, um, uh, this will affect the grid integrity if there is no wind and if there is no sun, unless they put up huge uh, battery uh, st for storage of the electricity. Now, it is really uh, the the biogas or biomethane power plants uh, becomes the solution for this intermittent uh, operation because it provides base load power and some areas it can produce also as peak load uh, peak load source and uh, also stabilize the the grid by when the solar and wind are out now. It's not only energy grass that we'll be using. We will be using all the under uh, these items underlined in red. We can use all those as feedstock in our anaerobic digesters, uh, including the organic fraction of municipal wastes. So every uh, every town and and cities nearby, when we uh, in the installation that we will have can be used as a pit stack. So you will see clean uh, uh, cities and towns. So now we've, uh, we, in our feasibility, uh, we've calculated that the biomethane that we're going to produce is very competitive in terms of uh, fuel generation, uh, power generation we'll, for imported LNG, it's about 8.25 per kilowatt hour, but our uh, biomethane is only 4.8 per kilowatt hour. So that's a very good improvement in the uh, supply, the cost. As you know now, uh, GM Power is a coal company and they are charging the electric cooperative at 6.5 per kilowatt hour. So uh, if you decrease part of this, the the amount of uh, electricity cost to the user, the consumer will also go down. So uh, we started by uh, uh, selecting the best, uh, the best variety uh, of different uh, energy crops all over the country. Uh, we've collected about 132 isolates and focus on one uh, variety that we that uh, showed a lot of potential and planted in this 650 hectares. Uh, this area was a, is a log over areas uh, of uh, a logging company in Maguindanao, and this was the battlefront of the MILF and uh, government forces. So this this is considered a no man's land. Now. When we started planting in 2015, this becomes a tourist area. You will see here uh, a green fields and uh, 
um, you see this modern equipment uh, uh, and harvesting, um, mechanized harvesting is being done here. Uh, there are only very few workers in the field because napier grass is very hard. No, it's especially about uh, six months old. This is the one that with the highest cellulose content. Uh, they uh, use that to power the 25 megawatts biomass power plant. Uh, this is how we planted. Uh, we're using a, a mechanized planter. This is manufactured in, in Brazil. And, uh, and this is uh, This is the how we harvest a uh, six to uh, eight uh, weeks old uh, napier grass for uh, biogas uh, uh, production. This is being done in Honduras, where they use also napier grass, but uh, is this was used in a, a biogas uh, facility. Now, the natural uh, the biomethane that we produce is about uh, similar to natural gas it's 97.8 percent uh, methane and it can be used as a replacement of natural gas so you can use it you can repurpose existing petroleum refineries to produce the other products out coming out from the refinery uh, you can uh, also individually produce other products like hydrogen or ammonia or methane using one of these uh, unit operations here. Uh, we have discussed with UOP and Honeywell uh, to, and they've showed us that our uh, biomethane can be used in different products, including uh, producing uh, diesel, gasoline, kerosene, and uh, other aviation fuel. So just using this uh, unit operation. In some installations, we will be producing purely hydrogen. Hydrogen for power, hydrogen for transport, and hydrogen for production of ammonia, uh, urea, and uh, other uh, fertilizer, fertilizer. Now, we've found a funding partner who has deep pockets. They are fund manager. Uh, they, uh, we've organized a joint venture company with them, uh, uh, Pacific Secura International Consolidated Holdings will not only be uh, producing pow power, but it will also create a science park uh, as part of the portfolio. This will be headed by Dr. Noel Miranda. Um, uh, he's, uh, he will collaborate with all uh, participating uh, institutions and universities in the whole country, and the facility will be set up near Tai Tai Rizal. So these are uh, the the power uh, using biomethane that we plan uh, to set up in these provinces. Not included here is the fifteen sites for bio coal production. This will be produced about, will produce around 60 million metric tons per year of bio coal coming from the cellulosic part of nature grass. And half of it will be exported to Japan. Uh, the whole, the, they don't have to shut down the coal power plants in the country. To comply with the COP28, uh, 28, they should replace the fuel by using renewable coal. Uh, the heating value is similar to the coal we import from Indonesia, and they can easily replace without any retrofitting in the existing coal power plants. Um, we will be planting in these areas. Those losses in the forest cover is now around 14 million hectares uh, all over the country. We will replace with with grass and many other grasses because our anaerobic digester can accommodate all organic parts of uh, uh, the the available biomass sources. 
uh, but specifically you are now uh, talking to NCIP to use the um, idle lands of the IPs, including Dr. Cruz uh, group in uh, Subic in Morong, where maybe will be the, this will be the first area. We will bring in the 8,400 heads of dairy cows. We sit up in that area uh, and then in most of the installations will be having a dairy farm as well to give uh, more jobs to the people who are not uh, being, uh, who, who cannot work in the plantation because it's fully mechanized. So we will use them in the dairy production because we are importing a lot of milk, but we can, we, we will also be producing more milk for uh, the school uh, feeding program. We have introduced this project since 2010. And all these people in, in the I, IPs are waiting for us. And this is the time that we start. Uh, we will start in January, 2024. And simultaneously, we'll bring these projects on those sites I mentioned earlier. So, uh, not only power, but we will also be putting up hospital and clinics in every site that we have organized. We also put up housing development, uh, subdivisions for the workers and the population there. Uh, uh, we will sponsor a school feeding program, free lunch uh, in all the elementary schools, not only in the areas that we've covered, but all over the country. And then there will be uh, other livelihood activities uh, like dairy farms, poultry, hog farms in non-Muslim areas, fish farms, and algae production to collect omega-3. Uh, we will be producing a lot of carbon dioxide. We will utilize that to produce algae biomass. Part of it will go to the biogas as feedstock. So I think uh, this slide was also taken from the European Biogas Association, and they, they are showing that all these sustainable development goals can be attained using this approach. And this that is the last slide. Thank you very much. You can reach me in this email and my mobile phone. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Danny. You know, when I um, first uh, met you and interacted with you a lot, I uh, was always inspired by your um, uh, great optimism and, of course, your deep knowledge of uh, chemistry and chemical engineering. And uh, you've been through so many projects, and um, I think your um, uh, creative and innovative um, spirit and, the, well, your, your know-how, uh, these are things that um, many of our young uh, researchers and innovators should um, emulate. And I have been to Ginog, if you remember, I visited your farm there when I was looking at the, uh, the Eric uh, uh, project that uh, produced uh, polyclonal antibodies for ra rabies uh, in horses. So I'm uh, familiar with that area. And uh, then you were already that's also here. starting. So. Pardon? Yes, that was a long time ago. And I, uh, you already started your, your herbal. Uh, and Moringa projects as well. So I like to say, Alvin, that, you know, if uh, Danny was the president of our country, then he would be solving <laughs> our problems in a holistic way. He's doing <laughs> energy, he's doing uh, food um, and nutrition, high uh, protein and uh, quality uh, omega-3 uh, fatty acids uh, uh, to um, alleviate the uh, hunger, malnutrition, undernutrition, and uh, stunting. And uh, I would like to thank Vic Ilag for updating me on the activities of, um, of Danny and, um, well, advising me to invite Danny to uh, speak today. So um, I had some questions, and I wanted to um, uh, say that, uh, wow, uh, I see some uh, buzzwords there that I always uh, use or uh, worry about problems like um, uh, agricultural mechanization, but you do have ag mechanized agriculture here. 
and then uh, then I, I I also worry about how our country would produce a, a very important uh, starting materials like ammonia and urea. And you say, of course, in this um, integrated way that uh, you're doing it. And yeah. um, then uh, you've also uh, uh, solved the problem of um, uh, political conflicts because now this land, which used to um, be the site of um, uh, well, a lot of political conflicts is now transformed into a um, productive land. So, um, well, without uh, looking into the, uh, the chemical engineering aspects of it, and those are details that can be, uh, well, uh, uh, addressed uh, later, maybe on a one-to-one -one basis if people are interested, um, you do have the technology for um, extracting, purifying, refining, purifying uh, uh, the, the end products, right? But yes. um, I'm curious about uh, livelihood. Uh, that's solved by uh, your um, uh, plan to uh, set up your um, dairy farm. Okay, but um, how does one address the issue of um, a livelihood for uh, the farmers in places like Brazil? So it looks like your model is uh, uh, South American agriculture, which is overwhelmingly productive. Uh, starting in Brazil, but other South American countries as well. So, uh, Danny, just uh, that general question. Then I'll, I'll pass it on to Alvin, because I will have to um, head off to uh, UP Los Baños uh, yes. while listening to you. So Alvin will take over with the hosting. Yes, uh, Danny. Well, what's your question? <laughs> I mean, livelihood at this point, how, how yeah. would our company modeled after South American companies, um, uh, well, uh, strike the balance between, uh, of course, productivity through a, a modern agriculture, a mechanized agriculture, which, well, I have been, uh, you know, asking uh, everyone in, in, the, in the community about when are we going to modernize and mechanize our agriculture. Uh, at the same time, what uh, livelihood would you provide uh, the farmers or those working in, uh, in, in the field? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, uh, we will be focusing on the idle lands uh, that is uh, present in all the areas right now. And the, most of these idle lands are owned by the farmers or the overseas family workers, OFW there. And uh, uh, we, will, uh, we will be paying a very hefty lease uh, or some of them can also become our uh, contract growers. So they will have now uh, available funds that they can use to uh, invest in their rice fields, in their corn fields, and also in their um, animal breeding or hog, hog raising. Uh, the company will also provide them uh, assistance or loans if they want to, if they are not part of the uh, farmer groups that we have uh, engaged in, then they can approach us. We will provide them the funds needed to develop their agricultural agricultural land. You know, as uh, when we are present there, uh, new businesses will come out, and there will be new jobs will also uh, be available for all the population. Um, and our minimum salary for our labor uh, is uh, their, um, what do you call that, living wage, which is more than the, the uh, uh, existing wage uh, rate that they, they are getting now. So... Thank you, Danny. I think you have responded in a way that's highly satisfactory, at least to me, because uh, this is exactly what uh, is being done in, uh, well, a nearby uh, country like Taiwan, where actually the farmers as a group uh, represent uh, the wealthiest sector. They're not the wealthiest, but they're the greatest yeah. number of wealthy people in Taiwan are farmers. And uh, the reason is because they have mechanized uh, agriculture. And in the Philippines, we have uh, the farmers as the poorest sector, in particular, coconut farmers, as I understand, still yeah. earn four to 5,000 pesos a month. 
So that's below uh, living, uh, you know, standards. So uh, at this point, I think uh, we can ask uh, Alvin to take over. But uh, I think you have uh, you know zeroed in on the most important issues, and um, you're right. It's uh, the way for uh, you know more businesses to uh, to grow by uh, addressing the basic problem of energy. That's very important. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Giselle. Okay, and, I'll start uh, moving now, okay? okay. okay. <laughs> thank you, Giselle, <laughs> and safe uh, travels. Okay. Yeah, uh, Danny, thank you very much. Uh, uh, a couple of uh, technical uh, you know, questions here. Uh, you, you mentioned about, uh, you know, this neighbor grass that uh, would be grown in marginalized, uh, you know, areas, primarily because Napier grass, uh, Danino, you know, has a low uh, methane yield, and therefore you would, uh, you know, need more, uh, you know, of this material per unit of, uh, you know, uh, biogas that uh, you have to produce. That, that's one. Second, Napier grass also has a, a high, high fibrous, it's a high fibrous uh, material and could be uh, a challenging, uh, you know, material for anaerobic uh, digestion. So I would like to actually ask you how you, you deal with, uh, you know, this uh, particular, uh, you know, uh, I would not say a problem, no? but of course, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, uh, a material being used for biogas uh, production, this could be something which, you know, you will have to address because the digestion rate would probably be slower uh, with this. So with those two questions, uh, Adani, can you just enlighten us? Uh, All right. Okay. You're right. Uh, Napier grass per se is uh, has a higher um, lignin content. Yeah. Lignin is, it cannot be digested in the anaerobic digester uh, mm -hmm. without the presence of uh, cellulase. Normally, in areas where there are so much lignin, uh, they convert the ligninous pa uh, pa part uh, by adding a slight acidic solution or heat heating it up. But in our case, uh, when the napier grass is only about six uh, weeks old to eight weeks old, the lignin content is very, very minimal. Okay. So that's the time we harvest. And um, I see. Feed it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but in the case of like uh, what Dr. Rinley was saying uh, for the rubber use, it, they are after of the cellulose. So it's, this is the same case that we are using now in uh, Maguindanao to fire that biomass power plant. We let the neighbor grass grow up to six months. And mm -hmm. that's, uh, we saw that that's the lignin uh, or the cellulose part will be in the most economical form. You can wait more than six months, but okay. uh, six months to harvest a year will give you around 400 metric tons per hectare. So okay. that could be very uh, useful. In biogas at six to eight weeks old, it will give you around every harvest uh, 50 tons per hectare. So you have six harvests a year. You'll it, This gives you about 300 uh, metric tons per hectare per year. So that's a prolific uh, grass to grow. I see. Okay. Can I just uh, do a follow-up uh, question? Uh, for Napier grass, uh, uh, Dan, no? uh, there is also the uh, issue of uh, nutrient no? uh, imbalance, your carbon and nitrogen, which is crucial in an op optimal biogas production. So how do you also uh, address the uh, instability or the lower gas yields in, in this case? Well, uh, Napier grass is considered a C4 grass. Uh, in the root system, it converts the uh, nitrogen in the air to uh, it can use as a fertilizer. That's why we saw that in our 10 hectares nursery in San Miguel Bulacan, uh, after before the pandemic, uh, then we visited it maybe about six years after we planted it. It's still growing very strongly, the same uh, uh, the same vigorous uh, growth, similar to what we have in Maguindanao. So it's mm -hmm. the same variety. 
so we, we observe it uh, firsthand that uh, drought as well as uh, uh, nitrogen does not really affect the, the growth of rate of napier grass. Okay, great. Other questions here? Uh, yes, uh, Akad uh, May Mendoza. And then uh, we'll go to uh, uh, Al Sarafika. Go ahead, uh, Akad May. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Academician Alvin. Uh, good morning again, Danny. It's really uh, very nice to to hear you talk. You know, we have uh, invited Danny a long time ago. Uh, I don't know if you have been invited lately to UPLB. Uh, when you talk, you don't talk like, uh, well, you talk like as a chemical engineer, but uh, there's a lot of biochemistry, you know, that uh, he, he knows and uh, it shows. Uh, I'm always on the lookout for modern farming, modern farm uh, technologies that are being used. And you, you, that's an example of uh, what you just showed us. And we would like to really uh, um, inform our agriculture students that farming is, you know, is already modern and we have modern farms in the Philippines. And so uh, uh I will be, uh, you know, informing our uh, uh, our dean and uh, crops uh, science director uh, that you should be invited uh, again. No, and also actually for Chem Eng, for Chem mm -hmm. Eng students, uh, also for economic students to to uh, see what Danny has been doing. No, so for example, itong farm mo Danny, itong sa pinakita mo na. Is that 60 hectares of Napier? 650. Where is that? In Maguindanao. In Maguindanao. In Maguindanao. Yeah. Napier grass is really, first of all, for as, as a forage uh, grass, no, for for uh, for dairy and for animals. And but now you are using it for uh, uh, for biogas uh, production. Wala bang nagsasabi sa yung uh, there is now a conflict or merong ano na that's for animals. Kasi palaging ganun din eh. Kapag ka, <laughs> there are several uses, then yes. that's for feed. And that's for uh, a feedstock for energy. Hmm. Uh, so that is a, a question that okay. I would like to ask you. Okay. Uh, what we see here is expanding the stomach of the cow. So we put up an anaerobic digester. The same bacteria present in the, the cow's stomach is there in the anaerobic digester. So what are we going to put up? The same grass that the cow eats. So you put it there. And increasing the volume will also increase the productive uh, the production of biomethane. So that's how we see it. Uh, our model is the cow and the ruminants, actually. Yeah. So... Um... Siguro, ano, I will let the others ask, ask questions. But thank you very much, Dani. Ah. Uh, we will really invite you here, uh, webinar yes. or in person. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Akad um, Dr. Al Sarafika. You may oh, now. Thank you, Alvin. Uh, good to see you again, Dani. I think the last yes. time we met was you were pitching on uh, Napier sure. Gas. Ten years ago, to our investor group. <laughs> uh, right, right. Yeah, That's right. See you again. Uh, uh, together with Noel, I think. Uh, uh, Noel yes. is here. Noel's here, yeah. Yeah, area as well. Uh, I've been doing some uh, uh, advising and consulting for both uh, renewable fuels and uh, big tractions of lands, both for uh, bamboo uh, production, because I was a consultant for FPRDI two years ago, and we were trying to build the ecosystem for being able to generate enough uh, bamboo uh, for both construction desk materials, bamboo flattening, uh, and steam uh, explosion for cellulose production, as well as, of course, silica production for biogas, uh, biomass uh, uh, power, biomass to power for, for bamboo. Uh, and, of course, part of the calculation is the, uh, uh, the, the ROI for a power plant. And uh, uh, over time, of course, uh, both... Uh, uh, biomass, uh, uh, because of logistical costs, have really been very challenged. And that's why your model right now of growing 
uh, in place and producing the power in place works uh, because yep. you don't have the transport. And if we needed the transport, like in, in Central Luzon, they were looking at a thousand hectares and uh, uh, needed to support a ba bamboo in industry, biomass, and, and construction materials. Uh, it has not become viable. So my question to you is what kind of ROI, because if I had like say, now I'm, I have a 260 hectare Central Luzon property. Yeah? If I were to do your model with the LG 25 megawatt uh, um, power generation, uh, what kind of ROI after uh, are you looking at uh, in the planting, startup, commissioning of the plant, all the way down to operation and selling whatever the power uh, because right now I'm comparing it to solar. Solar is as used to be very fast, three to five years ROI on a given property that's not arable land. Usually, so you're not competing with agriculture. What the doctor, I mean, academician may is talking about. Uh, so clearly, there are competing. Uh, I saw your table definitely. I play golf in Wak Wak with uh, uh, Noel Singson, who's the CFO of First Philippine Holdings, and they're using LNG now. Or Malampaya power uh, power plants that used to be powered by Malampaya in eight thousand megawatts, and they just started on onlining their uh, 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 plants again with LNG. So clearly, to me, the economics is the bigger uh, play here. I, mm -hmm. I like the full aspect of uh, uh, enlightening uh, and, and, and uh, income generation in the barren mountains, lot the areas. We have some of those in Pangasinan. Maybe 40, 50,000 hectares also. But uh, clearly, uh, the economics is the one that will make us want to play <laughs> or invest in that sense. So, you having been there for yeah, 12, 15, 20 years, I don't know, maybe you know better now. Uh, uh, and also on the side, uh, clearly, my concern right now is the whole methane, bad gas, worse than 10 times worse than CO2 uh, language in COP28 is no good also. So, I don't know how you're going to counteract that kind of image, especially now that uh, kind of biomethane is not really looked at very favorably. But uh, you have a use case in Europe that you're talking about, about uh, power substitution from LNG from Russia. Definitely, uh, that's a that's a good play. But uh, I still have yet to know exactly how you're going to go against the, uh, the CO2 put, carbon footprint people and how to tell them that you're doing something positive rather than negative. Thank you. I don't know that's not an easy question, but please, uh, whatever you can enlighten us with. It. Thank you. Yeah, well, that's a very easy question. Um, the ROI is less than two years, but new technologies are already available now. Uh, precisely, we are capturing uh, biomethane and convert that into many useful products. Uh, well, you have also carbon dioxide. Uh, it's almost half and half between biomethane and carbon dioxide in, in, in biogas. So therefore you have excess carbon dioxide, which you can convert back to biomethane by using the water gas ship uh, uh, methanation process and produce more power. Uh, in the country, power is the most important commodity you would like to to produce because of the current problems. And uh, the other products, like uh, if you have excess biomethane, you can convert that into uh, 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 um, uh, ammonia and you can export ammonia. You can produce, uh, you can, uh, produce uh, methanol and you can also produce other byproducts that for a simple biogas facility, uh, you get more uh, profit if you can if you purify the biogas and produce carbon dioxide uh, and and uh, methane. Carbon dioxide is has so many uses at the moment, and there's a lacking supply of carbon dioxide to the existing beverage companies here because they are using diesel to produce carbon dioxide. So now we've talked to air liquid and they are going to buy uh, the CO2, liquid CO2 that we can produce and uh, they can use that in, in their uh, business. And the digestate, the digestate is coming out, the, the 
waste from the uh, anaerobic digester. Uh, you can purify, uh, you can separate the solids part. Uh, you can either pelletize it and you and burn it because it's more on lignin and uh, filtrate where there's uh, the liquid part of the digestate has very rich in phosphorus and nitrogen, which can go back as well to uh, the plantation. So yeah. that adds up to more return on investments. Yeah. yeah Thank you. you. Actually, that's exactly what I'm trying to do with the bamboo industry to yeah. have multiple product lines from power yeah. to yeah. panels and construction materials to silica right. uh, or cosmetics and uh, uh, soap manufacture in order for the ecosystem to work because not a single yeah. product will not make it economically viable. That's yeah. what that's I think. True. Uh, so, you know, Al, that's Thank true. You. We have been doing a uh, you know modeling studies for a, a multiple pathways for you know a particular, especially for biomass materials. And I I think uh, earlier uh, you know Danny was mentioning about you know production of CO two. That's why he mentioned about the algae. Maybe we can uh, set up uh, photo bio reactors, capture the CO two, and then bring it uh, you know to your uh, reactors to uh, enhance the growth of your algae and algae now has a lot of uh, applications you know you don't have to have an open pond uh, you know algae uh, you know uh, uh, cultivation you we can you can build those uh, photobioreactors. reactors we've been modeling such kind of systems and dr joel quelio has uh, a number of patented uh, design for photobioreactors. reactors maybe we can yes. talk you know about that but anyway, uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge, of course, the presence of our president-elect, incoming president of Paase, Glade, uh, Dr. Gladys Completo, also of UPLB. Uh, she's here now. And of course, National Scientist uh, Lourdes Cruz, who has raised her hand. And I would like to call on uh, National Scientist Lourdes Cruz. And ba basically, uh, I wanted to also to acknowledge Dr. Uh, Cora Claudio, who is also here with us. National Scientist... Uh, uh, Luli. Hi. Yes. Um, yeah, congratulations, Danny. I've known uh, Danny and this dream of really doing a lot for the Philippines, you know, alleviating poverty, producing energy. And so, I mean, coming from the Future Earth Philippines, you know, that global initiative, uh, linked to the Global Initiative for Sustainability. Um. I'd like to consider this in terms of the nexus between energy, water, and food. Mm -hmm. So how much uh, water, what is the water demand of uh, Napier grass? Uh, you know, when you produce, you, know, you have, you said you have 600 uh, hectares, 600,000? 600, 600 hectares. hectares. Uh, in an existing plantation right now. But in our plan, we're going to put up about 6.3 million hectares all over the country. Um, the water demand of Napier grass is around 6.25 liters per square meter. Uh, but we have calculated that in every area where we have the plantation, we put up a, a water impounding system. This water impounding system is a reverse of uh, a dam. We will excavate around 100 meters uh, deep with about two hectares of uh, uh, open uh, space. And that where we're going to store the water uh, every time there is a typhoon. And you know, typhoon goes all over the country 29 times a year. So we store this one and we put some fresh water fish on it growing in these two hectares by 100 meters deep uh, impounding, water impounding pump. So that's a kind of, uh, we will not be getting water from outside these uh, impounding areas. So that will uh, conserve the water use underground. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I also, yeah, thanks, Danny, for that. Because uh, extracting water from underground 
is uh, quite a problem because of land subsidence. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's uh, great to know that you're not planning to extract water from the ground. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I remember uh, you were saying that now you're going to use the whole Napier plant, you know, as feedstock for the biodigestion. And yes. you were saying at one time that the upper part of the Napier grass can be used for uh, dairy uh, as yes. feed. And yes. the lower part will be the one that you will be using, you know, if you're going to use that as a biomass fuel. Or biocoal. Or bio yeah, for biocoal, but this is a different plan now, you know. Yes, this plan now is uh, for uh, biogas production. We, so we will use a six weeks old uh, uh, napier grass, still very young. So we harvest all of it and feed it there. As, okay, and as, you... as well as there will be enough feeds for the cows. Okay, for your, uh, you know, for the livelihood projects. Yes, of yes. the community. Hmm. Yeah. Well, thanks, Danny. I hope we can uh, start doing something for the Aitas of uh, Luzon. Yeah, yeah and... we'll be testing uh, again, and we'll be there will be a lot of uh, survey that will be done. Uh, we start by January this uh, next year, and then we'll move on. Okay. Um, we have already uh, contacted uh, almost all suppliers in the world uh, for this project, and some of them are ready. Some of the parts, like the tractors, you know, we need around 10,000 tractors uh, oh. for this. So there will be several players that we can tap on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. Like, Thanks thank a lot, Danny. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, NS Luli. Uh, thank you, Dan. Can I now call on Dr. Cora Claudio? The floor is yours. Good morning. Can you can you hear my canned photo? I just woke up, so uh, I don't want to show you my face. Okay, uh, Dan. <laughs> uh, long time no see, no. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, I really would like to know more. What happened to your uh, Malungay uh, project. Uh, I want to react first to both uh, Dr. Cruz and Dr. Sorapika's uh, points. Uh, Dr. Cruz, uh, are you still there? Uh, can you consider uh, also bamboo for food? When Wasi Sip was alive, he would always pound on my head to focus my efforts on bamboo for food. That is using the bamboo shoots. Because anyway... Yes. For every uh, bamboo plant, uh, you must really take out some of the bamboo shoots uh, so that you can allow better growth for the other uh, uh, poles. Uh, so uh, we are looking into that, but Filipinos uh, are uh, really not treating bamboo shoots well enough. Uh, uh, and so we are coming out with a book on bamboo shoots, a recipe book, uh, and uh, we hope to be able to can because I, I don't eat rice. I eat uh, only bamboo shoots uh, as my source of... Oh. Yeah, because uh, rice, when it reaches your tummy, becomes glucose. That's uh -huh. why so many, uh, so many uh, uh, people with diabetes in this country because we eat too much rice. No? But unfortunately, if you go to the grocery and buy, you cannot buy... Uh, Wait a moment. Let me just pu put out my... I, I have bought my cell phone and... Okay. Uh, you cannot buy... Uh, you cannot buy uh, bamboo shoots uh, uh, that are produced locally because they are not packed properly. So every time I have to buy those canned uh, bamboo shoots that are imported from China. Uh, my question, my issue now is how you can produce and bring to market bamboo shoots at that same price because uh, I, I cannot imagine how they can can uh, the bamboo shoots uh, and sell it at like 50 pesos per can <laughs> because uh, we have to think of a better way of packaging. Now, uh, for Dr. Serafica, 
you mentioned uh, food, uh, energy, and water. Actually, we are focused, our Climate Action and Sustainability Alliance, CASA, is focused on addressing this, I call, few catalysts for development, food, energy, and water, with another W, waste. Uh, so, uh, I'm glad to hear that there is also a food uh, possibility, but not for human beings with Napier, uh, and uh, you have energy and water. What we need now, I think, uh, because we have 7,641 islands, uh, we, uh, we need distributed energy systems. Unfortunately, uh, the um, Department of Energy and uh, some of the billionaires who are uh, uh, putting uh, big investments in energy are looking at what they call SMRs, uh, uh, small uh, modular reactors. Uh, I think the proper name for that actually is, should be SNR. <laughs> so that we do not forget that it is nuclear. And although my doctoral thesis is on nuclear, I'm very much against use of nuclear power plants in our country. So uh, I look at your uh, project, Danny, as uh, a form of uh, distributed energy systems, which can still be managed at the corporate level. Uh, so you are looking at that at mass big uh, tracts of land. And immediately your opposition will be similar to the opposition that people are talking about uh, for solar, right? Because they are using lots of lands. But if we can have smaller ones that can be managed from some, you know, uh, by a group uh, so that uh, they can be uh, optimally used, uh, I think that will be great to start that way. Um, my question is, what is a um, what is the size of the good enough uh, Napier uh, system that can produce what you need for food, energy, and uh, you can have water? The reason why I'm asking that is I have already a site for it. A friend of mine is already doing Napier, but uh, he has 60 hectares. He has more, but in other areas. Because I think that will help uh, a lot, uh, even IPs. And you can start with those instead of having massive uh, uh, land uh, sizes. Uh, so you can have the food, you can have energy and water. And so that's my question. What is the size of a good enough with all of the needed uh, uh additions of uh, using it for food using it for uh, uh having water available uh, all of those and the uh, machinery that you need to be able to harvest what can what is that size that is good enough for us to have a good working napier uh, uh project that will also address the potential waste uh, going to the atmosphere all right it's a very good question, uh, Cora. Um, we are talking to some resort uh, islands uh, like Balisin, and there's an upcoming one in in uh, Palawan. Uh, the good thing with uh, anaerobic digestion, it accepts any organic uh, feedstock. So if you're in an island, you can grow seaweeds. You remove the seawater, you can use it as feedstock. Um, seaweeds or algae do not have lignin. So it has very available biogas content. So for terrestrial area, the one megawatt, you will need around 300 hectares to produce one megawatt of power continuously. So... So depending on the area, um, we, since you, uh, you produce biomethane, you can use uh, fuel cell uh, power. So you can feed that uh, fuel cell uh, uh, power. So you can generate uh, uh, power with uh, very silent uh, and uh, there is no uh, uh, smoke that's coming out. It's only water coming from 
fuel cells. So those specific uh, specialized areas, we can provide uh, power by using uh, biogas production. But of course, you have to capture all the biogas um, emitted from it. So it's you can grow additional feedstock by utilizing the carbon dioxide and produce uh, algae biomass for that. Okay. Do you have already a design for that? Uh, that uh, because my dream now as my legacy program is to put up what I call uh, SDG number three centers, uh, uh, good health and well-being centers. Because my family is in sports and uh, so I want to address uh, needs of people and the environment. And uh, for the environment, we really need the distributed energy systems. And uh, we in this center, we will have things that can make people healthy with the sports, etc. And then things that can make that can address environmental and energy issues, uh, uh, including uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Gisela has uh, been producing uh, uh, cosmetics from uh, marine resources. Uh, we hope to be able to uh, to have that also. So services and products that can address good health and well-being issues. So I'm very much interested in what you are talking about, but uh, in smaller sizes you know, so that we can have it in different areas in the country. Because it, it's not easy, even with IPS, to get big tracts of land now. Uh, but and there's opposition, lots of opposition, as you can hear about solar, but uh, it is easier to have smaller ones. And uh, even in capital, uh, that will be easy to, and, and a company like yours that knows a lot about this can be the corporate uh, uh, guy, advisor, or uh, co-investor in these things, no? Yeah, you are also talking to Lubang Island, so we can provide them maybe two megawatts to five megawatts, depending on their demand. So just give us, uh, we can, we have already the design. Um, we can scale down and scale up. Uh, that's uh, already prepared for. Okay, I I will be I will be glad to meet with you because I have a list a long list of potential areas because one possibility is we can have it also as ecotourism uh, destinations that can be modeled for others and for that we can get uh, tax breaks like the way they do for EPSAS. Right. Okay. All right. So thank you, Doctor Cora. Uh, uh, are there any questions? Uh, you know. I would like to ask Danny uh, about ano, ano yun, what are the uh, ways that are generated in your processes that uh, we can possibly torrify. Uh, you, you mentioned about torrefaction, and I think uh, torrefaction is a good uh, uh, you know, way of uh, converting it into uh, fuels, uh, the energy. However, it also requires an external energy uh, to, to do that. So what's the uh, viability of... Uh, torrefaction uh, to, to process some of your uh, wastes in your processes? Well, in, in the biomethane production, we have the digest state. This mm -hmm. is a uh, waste, okay. uh, mostly lignin. We can uh, use that for torrefaction. But by the way, we have also 15 sites that we will be putting up uh, uh, steam explosion plants to produce uh, black pellets, similar to the refaction process. Okay. So it, it will be scattered all over the country, uh, especially in the coconut areas where we can utilize the coconut husk, uh, all the other coconut debris, uh, maybe some bamboo tree trunks if there's it's available. Uh, so we can utilize those in, in this type of plant. Okay. Great. Okay. So time check, it's uh, 9.35 a.m. here in the Philippines. Are there other questions? Uh, I don't maybe, see any. Maybe, uh, Doc, I, ahead, can call, I can call Noel Miranda, Dr. Miranda. Noel. Uh, yes. Uh, other division. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, well, I would like to invite. I I think in 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 regard to this uh, project, we'd like to also invite the participation of everyone to help support the uh, the the establishment of the science city that Danny mentioned, and this will actually drive all of the, the sustainable development processes that's related to this uh, uh, endeavor. Uh, we can discuss this more. I think we can, we can have a separate meeting on just the science park aspect yeah. of, of this development. But thank you, Danny. Danny, it's a good good presentation. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Noel. That's, that's great. We'll probably organize one uh, of those chats, you know, for science parks or uh, this type. Right, yes. Uh, uh, yep. May I may I also uh, suggest that we include the Philippine Foundation for Science and Technology. Our chair now is former DOST Secretary Boy de la Peña, and uh, we were the first to introduce uh, science centrums in the country. We still have uh, them in mobile forms. We have about seven that go around the country that we bring to schools. That's a, that's an NGO, and we also fabricate our own. Uh, uh, ex uh, exhibition sets, which we also export, no, to other countries. We have exported to uh, Australia, to uh, Brunei, etc. We are quite good in doing that. So uh, we hope to be able to participate in that science uh, park project. Okay, that's great. We'll organize that. I'll uh, talk to Giselle. About yeah, every, every everyone, thank you everyone well. is invited. Everyone is invited to to be there. Okay, thank you. So, Danya, so we, I think. I my, uh, go ahead, Doctor. Uh, yeah, just last one. I put my uh, contact number in the chat box. Okay, thank you, Doctor Cora. So I think uh, it's already nine thirty-seven. I think it's about time we we end. Uh, you know our. Uh, 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 session today thank you very much uh engineer danny excellent uh, presentation and sharing of your uh, many experiences uh in the uh in your various uh, you know business uh, uh ventures so anyway before we close uh, we have a couple of announcements uh here the next uh uh paase far side uh, side chat series that we have that will be next uh, Friday. It will be uh, by uh, Jenica Dizon Mountford, our country director for Waves for Water Philippines. Uh, she will be talking on ripples of innovation, Waves for Water's quest for clean water access. I hope you can join us again uh, next uh, Friday. Feb, can you show the other uh, slides? Uh, Yes, uh, this particular series um, is really uh, intended to generate more interest uh, in uh, innovation uh, initiatives. So there, there is a grant proposal uh, which is available on the website of Paase. If you want to come up with a paper, uh, white paper or whatever uh, related to Philippine SNT innovation, there's another form uh that you can find uh, at our website and also if you have some issues ideas uh, you know that can actually address uh, you know to the many barriers to innovation and uh, your proposed solutions uh, so that we can uh, really move uh, uh, our uh, innovation initiatives uh, in in the philippines so i think uh, those are all so once again let us uh, give a, a big round of applause to uh, Engineer Danny Manayaga. Thank you so much for your time and for everyone who has joined us and always joining us every Friday. We'll see you again next week for another exciting uh, you know, discussion uh, related to, to water. So thank you very much and have a long, great weekend and restful weekend for everyone. Again, congratulations to UP. See you again. I'm on the road. So thank you so much ah, for Giselle. hosting. Yes. Oh, and I'm so happy, uh, well, listening to the questions of Al and Cora. And uh, we're now reaching out not only to um, uh, academia-based inventors and innovators, but uh, to MSMEs like um, 
uh, Danny Maniaga and Cora. Maybe uh, sometime Cora can uh, also uh, give a talk in this series to let us know what she's doing. Uh, her, she has many, many activities. As she said, it's related to health and wellness and sports. So yeah. thank you so much, everyone. I'm uh, curious to know uh, your plans about the Science City, Noel, because uh, we know that the government, CHED and uh, DTI, they are encouraging the creation of um, KISS parks, knowledge and innovation, uh, s and parks in uh, leading SUCs in the country. So thank you very much, everyone. And uh, we hope to see you again uh, next Friday. Friday. Yeah, uh, thank can you. we have a quick photo photo op uh, with uh, Danny? Uh, you may uh, put yeah. on your cameras so we can have a quick uh, photo before we finally end. Okay. Uh, Feb, paki ano na lang, please. Thank you. One, two, three, smile. Another one po. One, two, three, smile. Okay, okay. Thank you. Can we see, Alvin, when will the recording be available in the Facebook group? Yes. Uh, when yes. will it be out? Uh, soon. Soon. Ah. Oh, <laughs> Maybe like, within the day. We are yeah. like we'll put it out. via Facebook. Yeah. For uh, all the uh, fireside chats, Good. they're available on our website. Website. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Get them soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Okay, have a bye great bye. day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Paul.